everyone. Welcome to Build Brunch, the daily morning show where we talk about the latest topics in entertainment. I'm Brittany Jones Cooper. I'm Shannon Coffey. I'm Britt Morin. I'm Allie Colbert. I'm Lucas Tim. Hi, everyone. Hey. Today we're going to talk about a press release from Megan Trainer that will give you all the feels, mm. what it means to be adulting, and an unexpected place to find true love. Plus, Tyler Henry joins the table to discuss his e-network show, Hollywood Medium, with Tyler Henry. Yes. Woo! But first... Very excited. But first, so a excited. shirtless Shawn Mendes is taking the internet by storm in a new ad for Calvin Klein. Shawn posted the steamy pics on his Instagram, and both fans and fellow celebs had some thirsty responses, including J-Lo, A-Rod, Hoodie Allen, and Drake Bell. What a group. Yeah. Oh. I just want to say, like, A-Rod just said goals. It's like we I know, and then I was like, like Hoodie Allen and Drake Bell. Yeah. Like, those <laughs> are not uh, with J Lo. I don't know who Hoodie right. Allen is. Congrats to Drake Bell for being the same article as J Lo. Yeah, like, yeah. Congrats. That was an achievement. Really? You know, J Lo and A Rod were looking at it together, right? Probably. Yeah. And then and they both commented at the same Probably time. Probably at the yeah. gym together. Or yeah. Like, yeah I know. I, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, he looks great, guys. He does look great. Yeah, it's he the does. classic, uh, the the enlarging that they did. Mm -hmm. um, similarly think? to Justin Bieber's. Yeah. yeah. Really? I mean, whose suburban mom kitchen is he in right now? Now, taking that picture. I mean, I'm, the setting is what got me with yeah. these pictures. Like, not only suburban, but like an outdated kitchen. Yes. I mean, that tile is from like from 1965. Exactly. This is a 1965 home that he just <laughs> walked into with his underwear on. I was like, let's take some pictures. If that's yeah. his real house, I'm even more obsessed. <laughs> yeah. That, that, like, is he poor? He, he looks... <laughs> you know, he, I mean, Suddenly, he, I'm attracted to him. Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly, he seems a lot more accessible. Yeah. Um, okay, if you walk into this kitchen and he's there, realistically though, are you like ooh la la or are you like, um, hey baby, put your clothes on. <laughs> Get You're your like, butt off oh, the yeah, counter. Yeah, Sean Mendes does like to play housewife. <laughs> <laughs> no, he looks good. Yeah, looks I good. think he looks really good. I think he works out like tw two times a day at the Equinox in West Hollywood, so if you all live in LA, go find him. Um, but uh, yeah, he looks Wait, good. Wait, he works out two times a day? Yeah, I heard that. To do that. I was listening to the podcast Keep It with um, oh. Cooking Media, Ira Mass, the third host it, and they were saying that, um, you can see him two times a day, morning and night. Not every, every day, but he, he works out a lot. He sounds so boring. I think that's yeah. what celebrities all do, though. Really? Yeah, because... It's their job. That's yeah. like yeah, their... Yeah. yeah, they have to. Well, wouldn't and they do that at, the, at your, their own home? No, not if you don't yeah. want to be seen. Well, he wants you to be seen. You go to West seen. Hollywood yeah. Equinox, Yeah, you want to be seen. We see honey. you, Shawn Mendes. We yeah. see you. I have Hi. to say, though, do you guys remember the original, the OG of this Calvin Marky Klein Mark. ad is Marky Mark, and he's yeah. still my favorite. Oh. I mean, Marky Mark. I know, like, him as a person is, like, a whole different thing. Okay, we don't have to go into like his <laughs> discussions, but like his body. Literally, yeah. <laughs> I can't stress this enough. I had Marky Mark in that Calvin Klein underwear as the background of my phone. Wow. Oh. wow. Do you cool. get what that Ooh. fucking means? So if you were to be with a guy, it'd be Marky Mark? It's not, it's just like, I thought he looks so good. He, he looks, looks so good. good. Is he number one on your list? Uh, no, you have a list? no. The point is, he's far from number one. Yeah. On he just looks so good the in that underwear. Yeah. yeah. The thing is, Shawn Mendes is only twenty years old. But. Even though he's fit and beautiful and attractive, I can't really sexualize him. Yeah, but I think that's for what it is. some reason, Noah Centineo is only two years older, and I'm like that dirty slut. <laughs> he's also in the Calvin Klein right. ad, but he's not getting any heat because I think he's put it out there way too much. Yes, yeah, so we say. Have you seen his penis on his? Wait, yeah. yeah. It's not a surprise. Wait. <laughs> What? <laughs> Noah Centineo's penis is actually the sixth host of this show. Yeah. <laughs> Come on out! Come on! Come on! Centineo's penis! You <laughs> feel alive! Oh, that oh that leaked God. a few months back. Yeah, yeah. you're yeah. so right, though. It's so easy to sexualize Noah Centineo yeah. in a way that I cannot get on board with Shawn Mendes. Shawn Mendes is like yeah. a delicate flower. Yeah. He's like my little brother. I want to make sure that he's being a yeah. hoe someplace else, but right. not in front of my but yeah, I want to help him with homework. Yeah. 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 He, you want to help with homework. You want to tutor him in his math and algebra. Homework. Yeah, I mean, but he's definitely trying. Though. The Grammys, he's trying to sex it up with Miley. I think he is trying to... Reinvent himself a little bit, becoming. He's coming in his twenties. Yeah, but well, the way the way Bieber did it, the same with his Calvin. I mean, Bieber did the same thing when he had his Calvin Klein ad. It was also. Why Bieber did it? Is that the mark of like adulthood? You well, had a Calvin yeah. Klein ad. Yeah. Maybe really? it's like a bar mitzvah. It's a celebrity bar. <laughs> 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 oh, my mind. Get out of my mind. Oh my god. Yeah, you got it. You get in the undies, <laughs> no. enlarge the crotch, and you're a man. Yeah. Divide by two and add seven. That's the rule for the minimum age. Oh right. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. You taught me that. Yeah. yeah. So. 
I don't think it works right. for I'm you. Really bad at that. <laughs> um, I always say that when I'm looking at playgrounds. It's true. Yeah. It really works in oh, all yeah. cases. Playground. I think it'd be really cool if Calvin Klein like took a new take on it and like maybe like they used some like Steve Buscemi. Like yes. you know, like, I'd love Steve like, Buscemi. Yeah, that'd be in so good. Calvin Klein. He'd be great. Yeah, like you might have Steve Buscemi <laughs> yeah. with his dick out. <laughs> or Joel, like, or Paul great. Giamatti. Yeah. Either of those two together. Ooh, that yes. would be like Zach Paul Calvin. Paul Giamatti. Yeah. What about Calvin Klein? I think that's what they should do because. This is falling like a little bit like, yeah, we know. You pull out the cutest baby in the book yeah. and you know, show us his little penis. Yes. You're so right about <laughs> yeah. that. Bring it new. Like, Allegedly I want something new. In the same way oh, as a baby stuffing. penis. Yes. Even if it's big, it's still a baby penis. I couldn't agree with Shannon more right now. And I just think in the same way that Dove did that rebrand yes. you know, like women yeah. without makeup, we need to see a Calvin Klein rebranding of dudes without abs. Like yeah. we want to yeah. that sounds yeah. fucking hot. Yeah. So we got Paul Giamatti, Steve Buscemi, I think Thomas Hayden Church. I think he would be oh, yeah. good. I'll take a got the hair. I'll take a bloated Alec Baldwin. Ooh, yeah. you know oh, yeah. what? That's a good one. Oh, yeah. what about like Nick Frost? Ooh. Let's just fucking go for Nicolas it. Nicolas Cage. Oh my god, he's oh, crazy. Cage. Uh, he's Jack like Nicholson at the Oscars. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Eating these pretzels and stuff. Oh Honestly, guys, Again, you're writing these ads. We create so much goodness on this show yeah. that people just need to take. Yeah. Yep, it's amazing. Totally. Moving on, a press release for singer Megan Trainor's new music is going viral for its steamy word choices. The release started off by saying, we know you want to hear songs all about the hot newlywed sex, which is why you'll love the banging single, All The Ways. Billboard was wet for it. The, uh, this press release is so funny. Whatever, whoever horny intern wrote this. No, it, it was says, a real a PR comedian. rep. It was not an intern, oh, okay, and it wasn't person? a PR person. It, it was a it? yeah. It was a comedian. Her name's Caroline, and she is the person who started official Sean Penn on Instagram. Oh, I love which her. She's like one of the first people who made memes. Like, yeah. She's so so good, and she wrote this, and she knows what she was doing, and she's fucking getting paid to be a horny ass bitch, and it's great. <laughs> it yeah. was smart. It's so funny. Yeah. Everyone. It's like, why did this happen? I'm like, it happened because now we're talking about Megan Trainor. Yeah. Right. yeah. Every celebrity gonna have a like horny sex release. I mean, press release. <laughs> <laughs> hey, whoa. Press hey, release. if it works. I mean, Megan Trainor needed this. You know, she right. doesn't yeah. get much coverage. She did that weird desperate move one time at the uh, award show with um, what's that guy with the shaved eyebrow who didn't call me back? Oh, um, I remember the yeah. Didn't call yeah, I gave him my number and then he met Selena Gomez the same night. Charlie Puth. Okay, oh. so her and Charlie Puth did this like she was fake. With him, right? um, no, they, they were, like, did this fake kiss. They were right. never romantically involved, yeah. and it was like they had no chemistry, and it was really weird. Mm -hmm. And that was like a desperate play, but this is a genius play. Have this you, is so smart. It's so smart, but has any? Have you listened to the song? I have not. No. no. I, so no, we'll talk well, about no. the press release, not the song. But <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's crazy. Her name is in our mouth. So, okay, yeah. it's, it's for fame. She's hosting that show, the greatest whatever. She's we don't it. know. She's hosting a talk. I mean, you know, a competition show. Yeah. Good for Megan Trainer, who I can't remember. Or, uh, I mean, she's had a lot of poppy hits. Yeah, I think yeah. she's one of those artists who consistently has hits, but her like personal life and her persona is just sort of but like, it blends had, in. But has she, she had, had a moment she had. two years ago? Yeah. Two years ago, she had no. like two songs. Yeah. Uh, all yeah. about that bass, no. Yeah. And then there's you, another one. You, you, da, 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 yeah. you know you love. Well, that's, that's all about that bass. All about yeah. that bass, and that's then. That's a different song. Oh, oh, dear no, Future no, no, Husband. No, 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 no. Oh. But that was all the same album. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah, but she didn't We're have all having one hit. Stroke. She had a one hit. Yeah, wonder. but she. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm like, you know that song? Da, 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 da. Like, it I mean, all about the bass was. She had she had the one album, All About the Bass. You're just saying All About the Bass over and over again. No, I'm just saying. All About that Bass. All About that Bass. No, my name is Lacknow. No. Yeah. Really yeah. Oh, no. that, that, yeah, that was That's, a really great. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. These were hits. You guys are such that, pop haters. Not radio no, play. No. No. I, you it. always make fun of my Taylor Swift yeah. obsession and now Megan Trainor. No, she was a songwriter beforehand, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. She's a really good songwriter. Yeah. I and she was writing a lot of songs, and then someone was like, "Why don't we put your face on this?" Yeah. Right. And Whoa. then that's how she became all about that bass. Yeah. And now, as we learned in the press release, she is married to the the ginger from Spice. Yeah. She was married a week ago. Yeah. Yeah. I do, I do love the press release is really honest. Like that's how you know him. he's the ginger from Spy Kids. Yeah. Like, whatever his fucking name is, he's the ginger. Junie, from Spy Kids. Junie, Junie from Spy Kids, and he serenaded her at his I wedding, see. and they put an Instagram video up, and it's actually pretty Super cute. cute. But yes, Megan Trainor was actually impressively on Howard Stern talking about her songwriting skills. Yeah, she's yeah. really talented. So, she's really, really talented. Well, we'll yeah. give her that. We'll give her that. I yeah, saw them on the red carpet at the Grammys together. A little drop, but like they were obsessed. They were like hot newlyweds all over each other. Yeah, so I feel like it is. Wow. True, true They're love. They're a cute couple. And well, maybe the banging and 
Yeah, Stop smashing it. their private parts it's, to smithereens. Yeah, I was going to say, is that your favorite line for the press release? That's my favorite line. <laughs> like, I just want to smash genitalia to smithereens all day long. <laughs> yeah. I think my favorite was, you know you want it, and you can freaking get it, bitch. That's mine. Yeah. Yeah. Also, but also, it's great, because after you freaking get it, bitch, it's on all digital platforms. Yeah. <laughs> like, it goes, like, it goes like, freaking get it, bitch, to, on all digital platforms. Like, because very you know serious. What? It's still a business. It's still a business. Yeah. You can get this song right now. That's Brilliant. why I love that line. Brilliant. I feel like it's official Sean Penn. She's so funny. Yeah. Instagram. Yeah, I didn't realize that. That's She's awesome. a genius. Good for her. Well, uh, a trending Twitter topic suggests that the real test of adulting is mm. the amount of towels a person owns. While some people say 10 is appropriate, others say two sets per person is all you need. Guys, we're talking about the serious issues here. Um, I don't know if I ever thought about this, towels in terms of adulting, but now thinking about it, reading it, I kind of agree. Well, how many towels do we all have? Let's get that well, out there first. Hold on. There's, there's bath towels, and then know. there's hand <laughs> towels, and then there's washcloths. Right. So are we counting all We're towels? We're talking bath yeah. towels. Yeah, and I, like, I real, real quick, I just want to say, when I go to someone's house, and they don't have a hand towel, and they make me use their body towel, Ooh, <laughs> that no. is like a form of assault. Okay? I hate that. I don't want to touch your body. So many <laughs> young men have that. This, right. yeah. this, this towel situation is, is particularly plaguing young single men. <laughs> yeah. I know women who date, this is something they look for. Or they're like, he doesn't have a towel, I had to use his towel. Gross. So, so I dated gross. a guy when I was 28 and I had to use, we had to share a towel. Right, and he it only had one. And what? we broke up. Yeah. Ugh. And they I've no been there together. Yeah. I've been there, it's disgusting. You could have bought him towels for your anniversary or something. You no. know, he I, was not, I was not trying to change him. You know what I mean? There were a lot of things that yeah. needed yeah. to be fixed. Yeah. That's very indicative of yeah. like, <laughs> probably a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. yeah, so I think that you have two sets of towels per person, and then two sets for each guest you anticipate having. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, and I think of sets. It has to be like bath towel, hand towel, washcloth. Some people love washcloths. And then if you get really baller, you have show towels. We don't even touch those that's towels. Because that's what living at my grandparents, they're towels. You do not touch. Like you do not touch those towels. They're decorative <laughs> show towels. You do not touch them. Well, those yeah. are just for guests. So I keep the towels there. I right. don't use them on a day-to-day -day basis, but when guests come, they're like clean towels on the thing. Yeah, you so gotta like, have yeah. extra towels. Yeah. yeah. I probably I have four sets. So like you said, I have like four towels with the, everything. Mm -hmm. But that's like two just for, for you me. and two for a guest. Yeah, but if I have more than one guest, then they're all screwed. Right. Yeah, yeah. Paper towels. Time to get out that yeah. bounty. The roll it around. Roll up that. You know. The bounty. Yeah, I think it is a good indication of adulthood. Totally. It's just like, do you have like the foresight to like prepare for something? Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Because most people are just like, oh, I'm out of. I don't know. I know so many people are like, I'm out of toilet paper. I'll. Use my hand. <laughs> oh, oh, what? Um, I was like, I where don't are you going to go? I don't know those people. I don't know them. I, I know, I uh, feel them out there. Right. Yeah, <laughs> but they I, definitely exist. They exist. It's definitely the problem, like Shannon was saying, that like you go to a party at someone's house and you go into the used bathroom and all they have is their just one used body towel and you're like, oh. I'm either going to just oh. air dry this. I, I pants, yeah. Pants. Yeah. Or just walk out of the bathroom. Let me ask you know. Know. Yeah, I use all their toilet paper to dry my hands, and then I'm like, looks like you're out of toilet paper too. <laughs> do you say something to that person? Yes, if that person yeah. is your friend? If yeah. they're my friend. What yeah. do you say? I don't want to put your dick on my clean hands that I just washed. Yeah. I don't come over and be like, oh, let me dry my hands. Let me unzip this and dry it on your dick. It's the same thing. Yeah. The dirty ass towel has your dick particles all over well, it. Well, I will say though, it's probably yeah. clean. Clean under private yeah, area they parts, just but but yes, area. you're right. Still, <laughs> honestly, if you only have one towel, I don't trust that you can properly clean your dick. Okay, <laughs> true. Let's no, just be honest it is here. revealing. They're probably like, uh, that's it. <laughs> they probably bring back snaps. Yeah. They don't even do a, a wash with soap, which is a quick yeah, like. Yeah, he's probably right. just like shower head, <laughs> clean enough for me. <laughs> mom should have taught him better. That's yeah, what I'm saying. I think as a mom of two boys, yes. like I'm like I gotta teach them how to do this right. Moms, yeah. are you listening? Yeah, mom. Teach your son. Teach your son. How to wash out of my mouth. Who are just say they really don't know how to clean themselves. Like, this is a problem, guys. Yeah. You're 25. Like, it's a whole thing. Oh yeah. my God, I don't even get me started. <laughs> yeah. Men do not wipe their butts. <laughs> Seriously. They're, they're like afraid to touch their butthole. How do you know this? When it's like, there's a big study it? on it. And yeah. Yeah. Men, yeah. It's, it's I have like yeah. personal evidence. Uh, but I have, I dated someone who I caught, like, um, after he pooped, he stood up and went like this. And his, like, his buttocks was clenched. And I was like, honey, you need to spread that booty hole and wipe it good. <laughs> like, if not, you have like just a smooshed up hole with all this nastiness in there. And then the, you see guys are always like, ooh, it itches. And it's like, because you don't know how to clean your ass. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, men, men pooping, it's the period of men. To back, yeah. to back up Shannon, I literally went out with two really good friends of mine and they had this exact conversation with how, sorry, you I know who I was talking about. how gross 
sometimes their underwear is at the end of the day. I'm Thank like, you. what the? I was what? like, dude, so what, what yeah. are you doing? Like, yeah. That's been my like, experience. I've seen the underwear, and I'm like, what is wrong? This goes with back to the mom again. 20s. They had terrible mothers. Yeah. Yeah. They don't like their butt. Their ass. Their mom wiped their ass their whole life and possibly, never learned. Possibly, possibly. Right so, yeah, so what's the real test of adulting? The real test is men don't Skin wipe mark. their ass. Yeah. 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 yeah, seriously. Yeah, but that is a sign. I, I was, I said, uh, the sign of adulting is body maintenance. I body. think, yeah. looking at someone, like the way. Take a shower. Shower, cleaning yeah. your skin, ears. everything. And ears. grooming. Like, I also think, yeah. like, women are, I think, better at, like, you know, you find a little routine and you have, like, skincare. I think men also should do that. Like, right. you can't just keep washing your entire body and face with bar soap. No. Oh, you don't need a man. No escape everything, but you just wash yourself. A man needs a clean bathroom. Come on. That's, yeah. yeah, I think that's a that's a, a sign, yeah. a sexy sign when you walk into a clean yeah, bathroom. Yeah. Clean bathroom, clean sheets. Clean sheets. So I think uh. sheets is also, I would think, even sheets bigger than towels. towels. I think yeah. some yeah. people just Especially have, like, a set of sheets. Yeah, and, like, no. That is always at them. least two sets. You need yeah. to, sh and how you often to should you change out. your sheets? Oh. You say once a month? Uh-uh, no, no. Oh, what? I do more than that. I was weekly. Of what the, I just read, read something. No. Oh, I don't change my weekly. I think the average man does it once a month. But I think should. I do mine like every two weeks. You don't do weekly? No, I do like every two You weeks. have so much shit that falls off under I take a night. shower every night, so I get in my bed oh, clean. Oh, so you, you, because I say New York, if you don't shower before you Probably go to bed, you're bringing a lot in that bed with you. I do like every two weeks. Two? With my laundry. Once a week. Like and you don't sit do with your subway jeans on the bed. Oh, oh, oh my wait, God. Wait, that's what I got to say that. Keep your outside yeah. pants out of my inside wait, house. Yes, <laughs> I've got to fight my family about this. Okay. Me too. Oh my God. My cousin and my brother walked into my room, got in my bed in their outdoor clothes. I almost... Oh. Threw them out the window. He's not your brother anymore. I know. Yeah. My family was like, Lucas, why are you so insane? Like, are you kidding me? You're sitting on subways. You're rubbing your yeah. people on the street. Are you kidding me? You need me? to burn your no, bed now. No, you do that. Yeah. You do that in my household. You, you need to throw the whole family away. <laughs> sit by I my am pillow? Now, I, sit by my pillow in, my, in, in your no. pants? How Ew. dare you? People Ew. in their regular clothes are only allowed to sit in certain chairs in my household. Duh. Not even near my also, bed. Also, so keep you. your shoes <laughs> off. Yeah, no oh, oh my god. Yeah, I, had, on oh, anything. I had a friend who would wear Tevas and <laughs> yes. she would never like clip her toenails and she would just like run around and her feet would be like completely just covered in soot. And then she would come over and jump on my bed oh. and put her feet on my pillow. <laughs> and I would be like she's a terrorist. ripping so my bad. eyes. She's a terrorist. I'm a bad person. She's yeah. a terrorist. She, I was just like, I don't, do you hate me? Yeah. Like, why are you just being wow. so fake about this? Wow. You, yeah. you do wow. that to people you yeah. hate. That's yeah. horrible. So gross. The fungus. I'm sorry. The that fungus on my pillow. She was like, and that girl's name was Ann Coulter. <laughs> 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 it's a fact. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised about that. Also, yeah. one more thing about adulting, showing up on time. I want to say that. Yeah. You okay, yeah, show up on fair. time. Yeah. Yeah. We don't need to wipe your butt. Yeah, wipe your butt, show up on time, yes. wash your sheets, and I hope everyone learns from us today. You know. Whew. Sounds pretty easy. <laughs> well, are you tired of dating apps? According to a new Cosmo article, hopeless romantics should look to airports to help them find romance. After striking up a combo at the gate before you board, true love could be taken off sometime in your future. On Whoa. The wings of love. Ooh. <laughs> she's trying to seduce yeah. me. Oh my God. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, she's always playing with you, Shannon. It's really yeah, is. right? I it's not it, fair. I love I Shannon. It. I know you. Look. I know you. Oh, uh, then she gives me the friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Friend. You and these woo, mixed woo. signals. Don't woo, you. Woo, she's stop. such a tease. Stop. She loves it. Have you me found Shannon love at the airport, actually? Oh, really? You did? No. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, the, yeah, the, so, <laughs> like, thinking about it, I'm not surprised, kind of, because you are, like, in tight quarters with people and force interact. But also, thinking about airports is so frustrating. There's so many dumb people, and people are mad. They're trying There's to... So many dumb they're, they're hitting you to get on the plane first to get their bags. I'm like, I have met my worst enemies yeah. on yeah. airplanes, totally. which I've said, like the, the girl put her hair above my seat, the guy what? who like sneezed on me, like yeah. the guy who wore Crocs and took off his Crocs. But that, like, worst mortal enemies on yeah. flight. But that's yeah. the difference between finding romance at the gate mm -hmm. or finding romance in the seats. That's yeah. like, if a, if a hot person comes and they're alone and they sit next to you, maybe something will happen there. But on right. that line, no one's no, your friend. Because every man for themselves. So you know how my life works. I was on a plane. I sat at the window. This really amazing hot guy was sitting on the aisle and we started chatting. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, this is going to be fun. And then this beautiful woman comes and sits in the middle seat. And I have to spend the next two and a half hours watching them fall in love. Oh. And like, afterwards, oh, no. I see them like walk out and exchange numbers. 
numbers, and I was like, you stole my man. Oh my he was God. mine. Oh, wow. So that's my Isn't love Isn't this story, why Southwest is the best airline for single people? Because you can just sort of. Oh, you can choose. You can, yeah, you oh. come in a little bit, oh. like, mid midline. You want to be, like, in the B section. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you can pick. So then there's enough people that are sitting in, like, the business travelers in A, and then you could actually just look. Pick the hotties. Yeah. That's actually a really interesting observation. Yeah, Southwest is the best airline yeah. for singles. For One time they I should was, use that in Oh, sorry, end. I didn't mean to cut you. Go for it. One time I was sitting in the middle seat, and there was a really cute guy who was sitting on the window. I was like, confused at this point in my life. <laughs> and uh, we, he was from Russia, and so we had this bit of a language barrier, and I was like, oh, Russia, like, are you really, like, is it really like how it is? And he's like, we accept everyone except gays. And I was like, okay, whatever. Um, <laughs> anyways, he was really cute, he was really sweet. He was like a basketball player and he had to make a connecting flight after and we had spoke the whole flight. We we're like talking about everything we do and I was like, let me help you find your connecting flight. And I was like so confused that I took him to the wrong terminal, he oh missed his God. flight. And then the next day, cause he had my number, he was like, I missed my flight, I'm like stuck at the airport. Can I come and like stay at your apartment? <gasps> what? And I was like, stranger name. No. <laughs> anyways, I'm just saying it could turn sour, like you might feel a flame, but then yeah. it could turn into a fire. Yeah. All I, so, all, so the moral of that story is, it was good you didn't bring him home because he could have killed you, right. yeah. but yeah. you made him miss his flight. Cool. He also sounded a lot bigger <laughs> than that. Yeah. Cool. I'm scared to talk to strangers at the airport because when I was like, uh, I think I was like 16, I met a cute guy and he was like, hey, can you watch my bag? Yeah. And I was waiting to get next picked up off. by my dad. And then my dad showed up and I had this huge black <laughs> duffel bag next to me and he was like, what's that? And I was like, I don't know, some guy told me to watch it. And he was like, Shannon, what? You don't know what's in this bag? And he like freaked me out. He was like, this could be a bomb. And I was like, dad, he was hot. He was hot, dad, you don't get it. He had blonde hair and a server look. And then like, we were like freaking out and the guy came back and was like, what's going on? And my dad was like, that guy's not even hot. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I like that you almost became a drug mule because uh, the guy was yeah, hot. No, I like that your dad's pissed at the end because he's not even hot. Yeah. yeah. Like, Shannon, you had God better. Damn it. Yeah, damn fire, it. fire, Shannon. Take okay. drugs for a hot, a real hot guy <laughs> next time. Yeah. hot guys. That's you know what's funniest to me about this Cosmo article what? What? is that this study was um, made by oh, yes. the, that bank. bank. Yeah, um, HSBC. HSBC. I yeah. was like, why is a bank a like, British do you bank. think people have sex at the airport? <laughs> They're like, we have to look at, um, <laughs> I'm not, not doing yeah, what um, that. Yeah, what was I don't know. That was Russian. It, it, it was Russian. Russian. She, she got me thinking Russian. She got me thinking Russian. I was like, a British accent She got me thinking Russian. Russian. Sorry. Oh, I, I, I got, let him live, let him live. <laughs> I had Putin in my head. I had Putin in my head. But one in 50 people, which I still think is high. I don't know. I mean, I would. What is it, one in 50 people? Because I get an airport. I am so efficient. I get, I TSA pre-check. I'm not talking to anyone. I'm not looking at anyone. I don't need to take my computer out. I'm there at the gate. I'm sitting there. I'm waiting yep. for it. I'm on the flight. Boom. Agreed. Yeah. And so I get what this article maybe is trying to inspire is it take the headphones out and maybe talk to someone. Yep. I remember um, Bethany Frankel's book, Place of Yes, she also said that. I guess she got a job. True. Work on 90210 is like a PA or something like that. <clears throat> but, um, and I think that is kind of lost in our generation of just meeting someone random. Yeah. So especially if you're flying from New York to LA, that's when you want I've to do it. I've certainly done it. Like, anyway, it's like in border places. You but, like to, you want to respect people. Like yeah. I know statistically one in eight people is gay. So if I go on a plane, I just point out eight seats. I go, listen, one of you's gay. <laughs> I'm gonna let you do you. Stand up. Come to my seat when you're ready. Yeah. You may not even know it yet, but just let That's me know. It. You gotta That's be polite it. about it. You know, you have to ask. <laughs> I actually have met. I have two instances where I've met a guy on a plane, and we're still like, one of them we're still texting. I met him on the way back from Argentina, actually, and we talk like the entire flight. What? You're really good is at he that. Argentinian? He is Argentinian. Yeah. Uh, Brittany's good at that. Don't Brittany's cry for me, Argentina. Part. Brittany's really good at meeting um, randoms. Right. Yeah. And becoming friendly with Remember them. Remember Giovanni? <laughs> yes. the the are, yeah, the how many guys do you just randomly text? Oh, we don't need to talk about that. Oh. <laughs> and how many of them are from airplane? I've done it twice. Okay. Yeah. The come. guy in the aisle, not the guy in the aisle. No, that guy I'm was probably married to that other woman. Right. My dream man was See, taken from I've me. I've only had two like boyfriends my whole life, so the, I'm oh. living vicariously through. But I've I got I've some admit, I mean, I wear a ring on the plane and I get hit on sometimes. Really? Yeah. Maybe yeah. turn some guys on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. That doesn't stop. But I want to have Southwest so I can get away from people. Like sometimes oh. it's creepy the people that sit next to you. It can I be. Know. Guys, stay safe out there, you guys. You really yeah. are out there. You guys, Tyler Henry is a clairvoyant who captured America's attention by communicating with A-list celebrities deceased loved ones and sharing their messages from beyond in his hit show Hollywood Medium with Tyler Henry. The show returns this week on E! with more celebs and breakthroughs for its fourth season. Take a look. I'm Tyler Henry. As a medium, I've been able to deliver messages to Hollywood's biggest names. Hey, Tyler, how are you? Yeah, I've been like waiting to meet you. Talk about overwhelmed. Oh my god. When I pull up to a client's house, I still never know who I'm about to read. Ah. Uh, Howie! Hello, Tamara! How's it going? Chris Harrison, I have never done anything like this. No one's gonna believe this. 
Next, I want to know what's going on in your brain. That's a lot to process. Mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> and my job is to bring those messages of healing, closure, and hope to as many people as I can. It's probably going to get real personal. I'm making an effort not to cry. It might touch a real personal family. Oh, I know, my heart's just going to come back. They're proud, so that's a message. I'm not angry anymore. He needed to hear what Tyler told him today. Oh, look. It's really powerful to make those connections. Wow. That was awesome! The season premiere of Hollywood Medium, Thursday, February 21st. And catch up anytime. Everyone, please give a warm Bill Brunch welcome to Tyler Henry. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. Yes, wouldn't miss it. We're excited to have you. So tell us a little about the show. Yes, so Hollywood Medium is now in its fourth season. And this season, we have a whole new range of, of celebrities, ranging from Rebel Wilson, Sofia Vergara. Um, there's been so many, so it's going to be an amazing, amazing season. Yeah, and what can we expect from, from this season in particular? Yes, well, this one is a little different. You'll see a lot more of the behind the scenes from previous seasons. Uh, I actually got my brain scanned during this season, uh, during a reading. So you'll see Whoa. how that was conducted. Um, for those of you who have seen previously, I read Dr. Drew. And him coming from a scientific background had that experience. and didn't really know how to explain it because he went in not probably <laughs> expecting it to be real. And after that, he contacted me, and we were interested in, in kind of maybe following up and seeing um, just kind of biochemically what was going on in my brain during a reading. So wow. you'll... Can you tell us, were there differences? There actually were. So they hooked me up to this like neurofeedback thing. I looked ridiculous. <laughs> it was like all... And uh, basically, as I was doing the reading, uh, they found that my brain waves were changing in a way that was really abnormal. And by the end of it, they were actually really surprised that I was even like conscious and speaking and, and like wow. being able to talk because they were like, wow. his brain waves look like he's asleep. So Whoa. we're definitely gonna have to do some follow-ups with that. Does not but... happen in normal life? Like in this conversation, your right. brain is acting normal. I mean, I have no idea because it was really just under the, yeah. the brain scan. But apparently, when I do a reading, it it does change. So that's really that's cool. You just uh, you mentioned Rebel Wilson earlier. That's right. I know you had on Chris Harrison, Sofia Vergara. Yep. Are there any special sort of breakthroughs there well, that you can tease? Yeah, there always is one. <laughs> I feel yeah. like every reading has some big nugget. But um, my reading with Sofia Vergara was particularly intense. Um, mm -hmm. Just because her brother had passed away mm. and he was murdered. And basically what ended up happening was he came through really clearly and had messages for his daughter. Right. And they were very personal and very intimate. Well, it ends up his daughter, Sophia's niece, was watching the reading in the other room. Wow. And I didn't know this. And so everything I was saying was applying to her. And she knew exactly what it meant. And he oh, probably wow. knew that, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. Wow, so. that's crazy. Yeah. So on Hollywood Medium, you, which we see in the clip, you, you read a plethora, a diverse group of celebrities ranging from all different backgrounds. Does that get intimidating at all? Mm -hmm. In season one, I think it was more intimidating mm -hmm. because you know I never know where I'm going or who I'm reading. And for those who don't know, that's yeah. a mm -hmm. huge part of the show. I never know until the door opens. So I go into this, and Oprah could open the door for all I know. Maybe season six. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so, yeah, hey, put it out there. Yeah, exactly, yeah. right? Yeah. We're manifesting it. Yeah. Manifesting it. <laughs> but it can definitely be nerve wracking. I've then, as time's gone on, though, I found that it really is one of those things where when you sit with a person and you delve into their personal life, right. it's like the cameras melt away. The person's not a celebrity anymore, and you're just talking to a human being that really needs something. Well, that's why the show, I think, resonates so well with viewers is because you're talking to these uber-famous people, um, and on a very personal level, seeing them break down all sorts of walls. Sure. There was this clip that I got to see of Chris Harrison. It's so funny. Like you said, you come on not knowing who they are. You didn't really know who he was when you saw him. <laughs> I did. And he's just like, I host a bunch of shows. You're like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes like, uh, who wants to be a millionaire? Like, oh, you know that one. Yeah. <laughs> what, was it, what was it like reading him, who is someone who's like yeah. on... TV, what, ten, what seems like 72 hours a week, yeah. um, with how long The Bachelor left. Well, it was so interesting, because going into that, I wasn't sure what to expect, because I had no idea who he was. Right. And so as I sat with him, uh, he was very skeptical. Right. And going into it, I don't think he'd had any medium experiences before. When I sat with him, I made an immediate connection with his aunt who passed away. Mm -hmm. And there were some validating details that only his mom knew. And that kind of sealed the deal for him. But he was actually there to hear a message from a mentor of his who had passed away. Mm -hmm. And this individual passed away in a really unique way, like a way that most people don't go. And you'll actually see how that kind of panned out in the reading. It was really fascinating seeing how that came forward. And mm -hmm. he ultimately got the validation. Is it, do you find it more interesting and more useful when they are more skeptical of you? I think it's more interesting when, when they're skeptical. Yeah. Because <laughs> I get to sit down with them and, you know, I really don't mind either way. When I sit across from a person, I've dealt with religious skeptics, scientific mm -hmm. skeptics, all have sat in front of me. Uh, my goal is just to leave people better than I found them. Mm -hmm. And it, oftentimes when you have more of that transformation where someone goes and doesn't believe and then they end up believing, it can be very cathartic. And how's it been 
on this journey you've been on, realizing you have this gift, and now making it a profession? It's definitely been an experience. I mean, for those of you who don't know, this all started for me when I was 10 years old, after I had a premonition of my grandmother's death. And growing up, we didn't talk about this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And as time went on, from the ages of about 10 to 13, I just started interacting with people and getting feelings that I couldn't explain. And by the time I was 16, I knew I wanted to turn it into a profession and really help people. And at the time, I thought I was going to do that through hospice nursing. I went right. to college wow. to try to become a hospice nurse. And that obviously didn't work out. <laughs> it was just word of mouth spread with the readings. And before I knew it, I had to make a choice. Wow. That's really cool. And now you're on E. Oh, shucks. <laughs> yes. You and the Kardashians. I know. Yeah. Hospice I, nurse I, to E. It couldn't have been further from what I was expecting. No, it's great. You're, really helping, you're still helping people. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. What is it that you are seeing or hearing when you're doing a reading? Well, it's multifaceted. So I always say my sixth sense uses the other five senses to communicate. So I, and when I sit with a person, I'm not seeing your dead grandma standing behind you. That, <laughs> that would make my job really easy. In fact, it's actually really just a series of impressions. When I sit with a person, I basically enter into a daydream-like state where I have to be kind of conscious or conscientious of things that I wouldn't normally be. And so scribbling is my way to do that. And I basically relay anything that I hear, smell, feel physically, I have to kind of figure out why I'm getting these changes, as it can be information. And when I'm able to do that, I'll deliver a message, and the client usually validates it. Yeah. Is it difficult to get into that state sometimes? It can be, but that's why I have that process of yeah. scribbling. For those of you who have seen the show, you'll know that I scribble, and that really just kind of facilitates that connection. It's my cue to both those on the other side and myself to kind of start turning on and start connecting. So I went to a medium recently, which uh -huh. I, yeah, and, and I found out some interesting information, but my question is, as someone who grew up really Christian and really religious, you know, we have this sense of like heaven and hell. Sure. Can you see people who were bad people <laughs> in your readings, or do they like not come to you as spirits because they're on like it's the dark side? Great question. I've actually had a whole number range of people come through, regardless of if we'd consider them good people, bad people, people who've done good things, people who've done bad things. What I have found from the other side is that fundamentally, I believe our consciousness continues on. I don't claim to see a heaven or a hell. I don't claim to even know or understand <laughs> any of that. But what I do know is as consciousness continues on, I think we see the ripple effect that our actions and our and our in actions had on the world around us. And so when we transition, I think we reach a higher state of consciousness, ultimately, where we're able to take accountability, see how we made others feel. And ultimately, I think that's judgment. That's the judgment we come to. It's, I don't necessarily believe it's a bearded man in the sky giving that judgment, as much as I think um, anything a person does, they see how they mm -hmm. affected others with it, for better or for worse. That's mm -hmm. heavy. So, yeah. And so I have a question because sometimes this has happened to me a couple of times when someone on the street will randomly stop me and be like, I need to talk to you <laughs> to relay information. Yeah. Yes. So like, do you think that someone who uh, uh, gets a reading should be someone who seeks out a medium or should they just wait for them to come to them like <laughs> I, a person on the street? I definitely think a reading is the type of thing that requires a time and a place. And I really liken it to therapy. You, you wouldn't have an effective therapy session in 30 seconds in front of Subway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the same way, you probably aren't going to get a full psychic reading that way. Um, I would say, you know, with that in mind, if, if someone does come up to you and says, hey, I have some information, then tell them, OK, well, what is it? Because sometimes uh, scam artists will try to seek out people and say, hey, I have something I need to tell you. And for $500, I'll, I'll tell you more and right. more. Don't fall for those scams. I think in people who are legitimate, you'll have heard about them before in most cases. And uh, word of mouth spreads, and it's a powerful thing. And you should be able to seek it out. I don't think it should seek you. Nice. And is there anything you suggest someone not do when they go to meet a medium? Yeah, I would say you know, if you go to see a medium, um, just be very conscientious of what you're saying, how you're saying it. Um, really, I think if you're dealing with someone who's authentic, you'll be able to feel that. You know your loved ones more than any medium. So you'll be able to know if the information that's coming through is conducive to what you know about that person. I would say it's important to get specific details and information, validation, I call it. It can't be general can't be vague, and also shouldn't just be oriented around names, because those are researchable. Mm -hmm. So uh, when someone tells you, you know, their last moments, last words, childhood memories, that's how you know you're on the right track with someone. But let the medium do the talking. Yeah. Are you ever relaying information that is sort of like, like, I'm wondering if, if I spoke to someone who is deceased and they were like not happy with how I was living my life, Right. would you ever be like, hey, listen, your great grandpa not too happy that you uh, you have this job you have. You know, I think that because they go through a process on the other side, I don't think they're as worried about our realm, our plane, our human matters as much as we may think or like to think. But what I do find is information will come through that oftentimes is kind of a warning or a red flag. Mm. Grandpa's saying, hey, you need to get your heart checked, and if you don't do this, this is going to happen, and then the person has a heart attack. So there's times where that has happened. 
I'm always curious, like in a big group like this where we have an audience, do yeah. you, is that hard for you? Do you feel things coming in or can you shut that part of you off? So you'll actually see in the upcoming season, I actually do live shows in front of two to 5,000 people where I go out into the audience, I do group readings. So I've definitely had to kind of get used to that and yeah. being in front of groups. And the only way I've been able to do that is really being able to turn on and off. By having my process of scribbling, okay. that's how I kind of turn on. Versus if I were always on, I feel like I would constantly be reading. Yeah, <laughs> right. It would be really stressful. So. You mentioned your tour. It's called Life Lessons of Learn from the Departed. That's correct. So what can people expect if they come to your show? Yeah, that's a 23-city tour in 2019. I'm going all across the country. And basically, I just share the life lessons that I've learned from over 1,000 readings. And I do some readings uh, for the audience. And you can see the process in person live. Yeah, so can the audience do anything special to like ensure a read reading or is it just sort of, sort of something just that you... pray to grandma really hard. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I feel like people want to know because they want to come see you and I'm sure they want to like get in touch with their loved ones. You know, I believe that whoever comes through in these readings is meant to come through. And even if everybody can't be read, I think there's something to be said about the healing and the validation that other people get. And if you can see a reading and see that someone's loved ones are connected to them, then you can take away the fact that even if you're not getting a reading personally, your loved ones are connected to you. Yeah, oh, that's something nice to think about. Tyler, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. You can catch brand new episodes of Hollywood Medium with Tyler Henry when it returns to the E! Network on February 21st at 8, 7 central. And thank you to Britt Morin for co-hosting. That's Yay. all from us. We'll Bye. see you tomorrow. Same time, same table. Yes.